Good afternoon, everybody. It's Tom Christie back in the studio, and today's video is going to be on a painting topic. I've gotten questions um, about how do you how do you mix your paint? How do you know your paint brush is loaded properly? And particularly from people who are trying these things and get frustrated because paint is not coming off the brush or it's too thin, it's too thick. So how do you know it's right? That's a tough thing to teach. I'm gonna give it a shot here. We'll talk about fine detail, loading a brush. We'll also talk about dry brushing again, how to load the brush properly. And I'll show some examples of, of not doing it right. And maybe that's helpful to guide you towards uh, the, the proper way to load a brush. I haven't made a video in a little while because I'm working on some competitive entries for uh, the Ohio show, which is coming up in mid-March, and also for the World Carving Championships coming up April 21st through the 24th. I would encourage you to attend both of those shows, if at all possible. You'll learn a lot at both of those shows, and you'll meet a lot of great people. Okay, let's get started. First, I'm going to focus on vermiculation and the detail brush and properly loading and mixing your paint to get a good result. Okay, let's talk a minute about equipment or supplies. Um, I'm getting, getting a lot of questions about where do, where do I get my detail brushes Two places I've been buying them recently, the original gold King Art brush, and you can get that from Willie McDonald at the Duck Blind. And I'm sure you can buy it other places online. Uh, I've also been buying brushes from James Company. This is Ultra Point brush. And these are, this is a number four and this is a number two. Both very good brushes, but for detail, you need a fine point and one that's going to stay pointed up like that. Uh, for dry brushing, I've had this brush so long I've worn the name off of it, but these are cheap brushes you can get at uh, Royal Crafters Choice is a brand you can get at hobby stores. It's just a synthetic bristle brush, uh, but they last a long time. So I'm not here to sell brushes, but I think it's important to talk about equipment. The other thing I would recommend is if you don't have mixing cups, go online, go to Amazon or Dick Blix or places like that, art supply stores, and get yourself a little bag of these inexpensive cups uh, because it allows you to pre-mix some colors where you, like on vermiculation, in my videos I always recommend pre-mixing your vermiculation, and that helps you solve one of the challenges, which is inconsistency in the paint itself if you're trying to mix as you go. So if you pre-mix it, load up your brush, and you like the way it's performing, you're good to go, and you've got enough paint to do the whole bird that way. So those cups are a good addition. And then I just use water as a solvent. Um, a lot of people use flow mediums. That may help you. It helps paint flow is what I've, I've heard. I've just always used water because it's so readily available and because I'm lazy and uh, it works for me. So that's what I'll be using today. All right, I've got my setup here. I'm gonna use Nimbus Gray Josanya just for demonstration purposes. I'm gonna be mixing over here. I, I'm not gonna mix a cup of uh, paint for this demonstration, but let's start with too much paint in the brush and I'm trying to do a fine line. And I'm gonna exaggerate a little bit because I think it'll be helpful. Uh, now, I've got I've got this brush loaded way too heavy with paint and there's no way that I can make a fine line with that much paint in the brush. 
you know, I can try by lightening and backing off a little bit, but it's going to be hard to control because I've got too much paint in the brush to begin with. Let's see what happens if we start with too heavy a paint. It's kind of a similar situation. I've loaded this up with just paint right out of the tube. And that's kind of what happens with not enough water. The paint tends to blob as it comes off the brush. Very hard to control. Uh, the shape of the line. So I'm going to add some water. And if you notice over here, I'm, I'm using the palette to point up the brush before I go to the carving or the cardboard in this case. Now let me give this a try. It, also notice I use my pinky finger as a rest and I think that's important. If you haven't painted much, you're probably not aware of that, but trying to freehand without a rest is, is very difficult. So use your pinky and try to pull a consistent line through like that. So that was pretty good. I like that mix. Let me go to the other side and put too much water in the mix. And it's going to be similar. Um, well, number one, if you've got way too much water in the mix, you can't control it at all. And as soon as your brush hits the, the palette or the bird, it's going to unload all that water in a puddle. So that's a problem. The other problem with too much water is that's a pretty decent line but I'm losing um, the boldness of the paint because it's translucent. There's so much water and so little pigment in the paint you're not getting enough pigment deposited. Just three examples there. So you're looking for a happy medium. And I know that's easy to say and maybe hard to do, but I would always recommend you, again, pre-mix a cup of the paint and then when you get a result that you like like this one you can kind of make sure that all of the paint is that same consistency and you're going to have a lot better performance of the paint that way let me talk briefly about that was a number four here's a number two for comparison very fine point a good number four will point up pretty fine for decoy use. But let me show you that a number two, you can get a lot of fine detail with a number two. You can go down to kind of a, a hairline. The challenge with a number two when you're vermiculating a large bird is there's not much of a paint load in the brush. So you're going to be going, dipping, reloading the brush more often. So that's the only reason I use a number four primarily. It points up really well and it just holds a little more paint in the brush. So I don't have to go back and forth so often. So hopefully that's helpful seeing some things that don't work out if your paint is too thick um, you're going to have a problem if your paint is too thin it's going to be translucent or puddle on you so you're looking for that happy medium right in the middle and pre-mix 
your paint and that way you can always count on that consistency that you like. Let's go to the dry brush. All right, I've got a nice flat brush and uh, I've got a combed surface here for demonstration. And I'm going to use carbon black. I normally don't use carbon black for vermiculation, uh, but hopefully you can see that better, and that's why I'm going to use it in this demonstration. I always keep paper towel handy. So I've got my carbon black here. I know my brush is too wet intuitively, but I'm going to try it anyway. I'm going to take some pigment off and I'm going to go try to control it. And there's no way to get a good clean uh, dry brush with a brush that's too wet. Surprise, surprise, surprise. But it, it's easy to say it's not that hard easy to do. So I need to dry my brush out significantly because if a brush gets too much water in it, uh, it'll sneak up on you. That, that water keeps coming back. So I'm going to go back and try to load my brush up again. Let's, let's go too dry this time. I, I'm even going to change brushes because that brush is pretty wet. So similar brush. Maybe too dry. Too much paint. I'm going to try to unload it. Okay, that's not doing bad. A lot better than this. So you're better off too dry than too wet. But to me, this is a little too heavy and in your face. And I'd rather start super dry. So I'm using my paper towel, wiping almost everything off the brush. Make sure the surface of the brush is nice and flat. And you can do that by dragging it across the paper towel, and I like to do both sides. Now I'm going to start again. And you can see I don't have a lot of paint and not a lot of paint coming off, but that's exactly what I want. I just want to be able to build up the intensity by going over the surface multiple times. So you're getting a, we're getting a softer result. And as that paint unloads and I gain confidence that the brush is loaded properly, then you can speed up. And you don't have to worry about blobbing or hitting it too heavy because the brush is unloading paint as we go. It's getting less and less paint in it. That allows you to to work it a little harder, press a little harder, maybe go in both directions and work faster. So I hope that helps. You can see the difference between too much water, maybe too much paint, about right. Okay, let's say you're not mixing vermiculation. You don't want a whole cup of paint. Um, this is the way I do it. You can see this, I just finished a project. That's my palette after I'm done. So I do a lot of my mixing, all of my mixing, right on this wax paper palette. And you can buy these at Dick Blick or Jerry's Artorama. It's just a nice size palette. And uh, when I'm done, you throw the sheet away and start on a new sheet. But let's say, um, you know, the, the mixing is being done on the palette. 
what I normally do is put a little water close to where I'm going to be mixing the two colors. Let, this is just for demonstration purposes. I've got burnt umber and white gesso. And let's say I want to mix an intermediate color for primary fight, flight feathers or tail feathers. A lot of times I'll use burnt umber and white to get that kind of gray-brown value. But I'm mixing right on the palette. Again, a lot depends on how much surface area you're trying to deal with. If I was doing primaries on a decoy, I don't need a whole cup of paint. So I pre-mix on the palette and I try to use a larger brush like this so that I can get enough paint pre-mixed and at the right consistency um, to then use my more detailed brush to use that and uh, and take care of the paint job. I like to keep a little water close by on the palette. And the wax paper is good for that purpose. I've got a couple of water supplies. If I'm a little thick, I can just pull in some water very quickly. And that just keeps me from having to go back to the tub of water, dipping my mixing brush in the uh, water because I'm going to come back with probably likely too much water that way. So I've pre-mixed this color. Um, and then I would use that supply to go to the bird and block in those primaries. Now, if I was doing uh, a base body color, I wouldn't want to mix that on my palette because it wastes too much paint. I would pre-mix that uh, like I do the vermiculation, put it in a cup, and that way I have enough paint uh, to do the entire bird that way. My paint stays consistent, and I'm not trying to match on my palette all the time what I've already put on the bird, if that makes sense. But th that's the way I do it. I mix on a wax paper palette like this. And uh, next question might be, well, Tom, how do you know that color is right? And that's where I don't think I can give you a lesson on that. Uh, and that's why I made my painting videos, because I give the mixes in those and the specific colors you use to mix. Uh, that's a tough thing to teach. Uh, it's possible, but you almost have to go bird by bird uh, to, to uh, teach color mixing like that. One other quick note. Uh, it's a good idea to change your water out on a pretty regular basis. Uh, as soon as I wash this brush out, my water has got some stained color to it. I'll uh, use that as long as I'm doing browns or dark colors, but if I was going to do a white next, I'd probably refresh my water before uh, mixing up that white. Well, that was a pretty quick video but uh, hopefully it's helpful and leave me some comments um, if you see things that I'm missing that might be helpful I appreciate the suggestions I can't always do it but I appreciate the input and that at least gives you a place to start in your paint mixing and making sure that the paint is coming off your brush the way you want it to until next time Tom Christie signing out good carving to you